Hello everyone, this is Rosh from the Poor Millennial Mom. This channel is all about cash stuffing, budgeting, and debt repayments, so if you are into that, please keep watching. I am a single mom of two kids living in Canada, and I'm also in my last semester of my undergraduate degree, so... Whew. So, if you have looked at the title of this video, or the thumbnail, I mean you clicked on it, then you know what this is about. This is my debt confession video. This is where I lay out exactly how much I owe, and I'm going to tell you how I'm going to pay it off, and I'm going to tell you how I got into this situation, and I'm going to tell you what I'm doing now to make sure I don't get back into credit card debt. So let's get started. Um, there's no fancy sheet this time. This is just me and my little, uh, whatever this is called, writing board, I don't know, folder. Okay, so let's get started. So I have five debts here. I'm going to write them out, I'm going to explain them, and then I'm going to tell you what my strategy is. So the first one is FIDO. FIDO MasterCard. Um, I don't even remember why I opened this card. Probably because they had some sort of incentive if you paid your bill from it and I signed up and I have cleared this card like three times and then I rack it back up um, and I hate it. I want to get rid of this, but this one is my lowest balance. It currently has $2,382.25. The minimum payment on it is $50 a month. So, yeah, um, so the way I'm going to tackle these, and I'm listing them in order of smallest to largest, is the snowball method. So I'm going to put all of my extra money towards this one until it's gone, and then I'm going to roll it and roll it and roll it and roll it and get rid of the whole thing. So on that note, the second one that I have is my Tangerine MasterCard. Now... I opened this card because it had a 0% balance transfer offer and I wanted to clear my FIDO card. So that's what I did and I cleared it and it was, it was paid off and it was empty. And then I paid this off and this was empty and awesome. Then I racked it up again. So uh, this one currently has a balance of 2000 nine hundred ninety five dollars and fifty seven cents these balances are accurate as of the day that i'm filming and they include any minimum payments that have gone in for january as well as any interest charges for january the minimum payment for this one is sixty six dollars so yeah that's not great and then the last one is my rbc visa um, this one is my oldest credit card. It's the one I've had the longest. I think I've had it since I was 18. I am hesitant to close it. It also has the highest limit. It has an $11,000 limit. And the reason I'm hesitant to close it is because every once in a while in your life, and if you're a little bit older, you'll understand this. Every once in a while in your life, you need access to thousands of dollars on a dime in a foreign country. If you've never found yourself in that situation, let me know. It has happened to me a couple times. And so I keep this card because I have found myself in that situation where I need to get home fast. Um, and the quickest way of doing that is booking a card on a credit card or booking a ticket. So if you wanna hear that story, I love telling the story. So if you wanna hear that story, let me know in the comments down below and I can make a video explaining explaining that situation and it, it won't be financial content but it is a, a fun story now that i look back on it so this card currently has a balance of six thousand four hundred eighty one dollars and eleven cents and the minimum on this one is one hundred and thirty dollars a month now I could use the avalanche method and knock this one out first because the interest on this, they all have the same interest rate of 19.99, but the interest on this, like, 
it barely is covered by the minimum payment and that makes me mad. I think $10 of this goes towards the principal every month and that makes me angry. But I also think I need some easy wins. So the way we're gonna do this is that my debt snowball is starting with Fido. And then once Fido is paid off, it'll go to Tangerine plus that minimum payment. And then once Tangerine is paid off, it'll go to RBC plus that minimum payment. So my goal for these credit cards is to eliminate them by the time my student loans come to you, which is what we're gonna talk about next. And I'm also going to explain to you why my student loan balance is as high as it is, because there is a reason. I didn't just take money out for, you know, willy-nilly without thinking about it. I, I did have a plan. Uh, COVID kind of messed with that plan, but regardless. And I'm just gonna highlight because I have the highlighter, so why not? Color is always great, right? Okay, so that is my credit card debt. It comes to somewhere around $11,700, give or take. We're gonna round it up to $12,000. We're gonna say that I wanna pay off $12,000 by November, 2022. Is that doable? Yes. Is it gonna suck? Also, yes. My income last year was like $25,000. So it's gonna suck. I'm, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it, but that is my goal. I hope you will join me on that. Once the credit cards are paid off though, we move to the big guns. So the big guns are my student loans. I'm just gonna have a sip of water. I filmed this like three times, so my throat is super parched. The big guns are the student loans. So I have two student loans. Both of my loans, like I said, are through the government. They are not private. They are not through the bank. They are through held by the government of Canada or the government of Alberta. And that is both good and bad. <laughs> it's good because the government can be forgiving. They have loan forgiveness programs. They have, you know, um, they have ways of helping you if you don't make enough money. But the other thing is the government always gets their money. So I don't want my tax returns yanked. I don't want any of that, that stuff going on. Um, but it does give me security that I know that my loan, like it is negotiable. My payments are never going to be so high that I can't pay my bills. My, um, I can talk to them if I can't make my repayments. Um, and so there are options and that is why I probably will not refinance. The interest rate on these I believe is prime plus one or prime plus 1.5. So it's somewhere in the vicinity of 4 or 5%, which not great, but is also not the 20% that these credit cards are. So I've talked about that long enough. So let me just tell you how much the amount is. So the first one, um, because I'm doing this in smallest, is national. So that's through the National Student Loan Service Center or whatever. Uh, the balance for this is... 35,040. The current minimum is zero because they have not entered repayment. And then the second one is Alberta. So these are held by the government of Alberta. And these have a balance of $39,960. And again, they have a minimum payment of zero dollars because they have not entered repayment yet so that is seventy five thousand dollars in student loans and uh you're probably thinking who the heck takes out seventy five thousand dollars in student loan debt like who does that if they know what they're doing i did here's why i'm a single parent when i left my ex-husband um five years ago now five years ago now I had no um, skills. I was a stay-at-home mom. I'd only ever worked retail, food service, minimum wage jobs. I'd never worked in an office. I'd never gone to university. I'd, I didn't have any skills. Um, I did have a friend who was kind enough to train me as a bookkeeper. So I do have those skills. And I did briefly for a time have my own bookkeeping company, but I did close that um, because I couldn't keep up with it. 
So I needed to do something. Um, I, like I said, I worked minimum wage and then I got laid off um, when minimum wage went up. And I was worried about how I was gonna keep a roof over our heads. I was worried about how I was gonna pay the bills. And there was a school nearby um, that did an open house, a university. And I went in, I had a friend who was going there and she loved it. So I went in and I talked to them. And that is the day that I enrolled myself in university. I enrolled myself in November. I started classes in January of 2019 and I graduate in April, 2022, having finished my degree in Bachelor of Business Administration in three years. I used student loans to pay my living expenses. I used it to keep us afloat. I used it for daycare. I used it for rent. I used it for food. Um, but what that allowed me to do was to push myself through school. It allowed me to devote my entire being, everything, to school. It allowed me to maintain a high GPA, to complete a program that I didn't even know existed. I My degree is in business, but my concentration is on social innovation. Um, and it's allowed me opportunities that I'd never even thought in a million years I could have. Um, when I graduate in April, I'm applying for jobs, obviously, for full-time jobs. And I am hoping to have this paid off, ideally, by like 2025. So three years. I want these loans gone. Um, I don't know if I can do it. But if I can, I think that would be amazing. So... To close this off, I'm going to write down the total amount here, um, just so you can see. And then I want to give you some advice, because um, what is YouTube if not a place to learn from each other, right? So my total debt amount at this point is $86,858.50. Yes, that's that's what I owe. I hate this number. I don't like this number. This number is awful. This number is going to drag me down. This I could have bought a house with this. Um, but I, I took it out. I used the money. And it is my responsibility now to pay it back. So I hope that you are going to join me in my journey of paying down 86, almost $87,000 in debt. I hope that you take this as a warning. I hope that if you do take out debt, that you do it in a strategic way. And I know this, this student loan debt might not seem strategic. This might not seem like a good idea, but I did what I had to do, what I thought was the best thing at the time to set up a good life for me and my kids. And you might not agree with that. Um, if you're going to come into my comments and tell me how dumb I am, I don't want to hear it. I know every time I pay a credit card down. I know every time I look at my student loan balance. I know every time I look at my credit score. I know. Um, we are here to support each other. We are here to go through this journey together. And if you're going to drag me down, <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Okay? So... Thank you for watching. I hope that this explained a few things. Um, and I hope that you will join me on this debt payoff journey. I will be posting a video at the end of every month. Um, probably similar. I might make a nicer looking sheet. But similar where I talk about what I paid off every month and where my balances are at the end of the month. Um, so, yeah. We're going to we're going to get through this guys. We're going to get through this. Thank you again for watching. I will see you again soon. Bye.